Greetings, it is I, Tantus Narvan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor Jacobinar, and welcome. It's time to continue our discussion on the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons, 5th Ed D&D. When we last left off, I was talking about materials from the Dungeon Master's Guide, in particular, talking about the multiverse. I was exploring and touring the Outer Plains with you. We had reached the Nine Hells, and I'm talking to you all about the various circles, the various layers of the Nine Hells. I've already introduced you to the first one. Let's continue our tour of the Nine Hells. The second layer, Dis. Dis is an area of sheer canyons and massive jagged peaks of mountains that sort of they got wedged in between. It is a place that is incredibly rich with iron ore. So there is these roads of iron that span the canyons and fortresses made entirely out of iron placed upon these peaks and pinnacles. The place is known, named after its archduke, Lord Dispater. He is a master, manipulator, and deceiver, and is devilishly handsome, with only small horns and a tail and a left cloven foot. Other than that, he looks entirely human. He sits upon a crimson throne in the heart of the city of Dis, the greatest metropolis in all of the Nine Helms. Mortals go here to conspire with devils and to make deals with him. But Dispater is known for getting a little piece of all of these contracts and collecting it, so that he is the master of all the contracts that occur here. But he is also the most loyal and resourceful of all of Asmodeus' servants. He is just to a fault loyal to his master. He is, amongst all the devils, the one that also loves the most manipulating and controlling mortals and dealing in their souls. He gets, he is all about spreading evil upon the material plane and has his minions not only try to spread it there, uh, not only control Dispater, but to try to spread his tendrils of effect and evil into the material plane as much as he can. Mineros is an area of stench-ridden bogs and rot and kind of just slime covering everything, everywhere. It is truly a place that is just sort of horrible and disgusting. Known for the fact that these yawning portals that exist deep beneath these bogs that you might just fall into and not even know you'll be sinking into the depths hidden there. Acid rain constantly falling. Where Cyclopsian cities seem to rise out of the bog, including the city of Manaros, which the player is named after. A place with walls that are hundreds of feet tall, keeping in like the flooded materials within it, in and out, kind of separating it out. Where there's this kind of thick slime covering everything. This is where Mammon rules, the Archduke of this layer. He is legendary for his greed. Known for being known for trading not only in human souls, but for gold. He is this figure with like a serpentine lower half and the upper torso, arms, and head of a man, except for these massive horns on his head. He sits upon this treasure room, filled with piles of gold of those that attempted to make deals with him and got the short end of the stick in the long run. Phlegros is the fourth layer. It is an area of fiery landscape with molten seas of magma and massive volcanoes where there are hurricanes of hot burning air and ash that seems to just sweep across across the landscape where we're sitting upon the largest caldera of the most, most massive volcano is a brimach a fortress of obsidian and glass where lava seems to pour through these streams, almost making it look like a massive fountain of like molten rock that seems to sit here. This is the seat of power of the two archdukes of this plain, Belial and his daughter, Fiera. Belial is an incredibly handsome devil who is very receiving, but you should be careful because you can sense very easily that his words carry incredible threat. As for his daughter, Fiona, she is a striking beauty that is only outmatched by the blackness deep within her heart. The two of them have this unbreakable bond, which nothing can shake, because they know that the two of them combined are what keep them alive and in control of this lair. That the two of them, without each other, would be no match for what goes on here. Stygia is a frozen landscape with massive ice-covered land and seas of ice where the gloom just sort of exists in the sky at all times, covered by flashing lightning and just ice and frozen blue flame everywhere. 
it is ruled over by Levistus. Levistus had one time tried to betray and overthrow Asmodeus, and as punishment, he was imprisoned in a massive mountain of ice deep within the center of it. But his archdukedom was not removed from him. He still rules over Stygia. He communicates telepathically with his minions, both upon the lair and in the material planes, giving them orders. Stygia is also home to its former archduke, the serpentine Greon. Now, Greon was removed from power so that Levistus could be once again put back in charge of this plane by Asmodeus. It is unsure why Asmodeus did this and dismissed Greon from his position. Did Levistus, was it because Levistus was a fallen foe that he respected and wanted something there? Or is it something to do with Greon himself, that he removed him from power as more of a test of his loyalty, or something of that? But it only is known that this, ar this archdevil wishes to regain his power, and plots for it. Plots to regain the favor as Modius and remove Levistus, but it's hard to say whether it is con we can or not. The interesting situation here in Stygia is not repeated anywhere within the Nine Hells. So that's it for today. I introduce you to four more layers, four more realms within the Nine Hells. Dis, an area of sharp, jagged mountains and iron ruled over by Despater. Mineros, a slime-ridden swamp with kind of just oozing green sludge or brown sludge over everything, led over by Mammon, known for his greed. Thegoros, a fiery place of calderas of lava and oceans of magma, ruled over by Belial and his daughter, Fierna. And of course, Stygia, ruled over by the imprisoned Levistus, who retains his power even though he's in the center of a mass of ice. In the next episode, I'll finish up talking about the Nine Hells with the remaining four layers. If you have any questions, comments, anything you would say, anything you would think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and of course, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel, The Empire and the Work I Do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon, linked in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.